Jack here, JBF Music and Guitar Lessons, and what I've got for you here is what I consider to be Dimebag Daryl's greatest contribution to guitar, or probably, more specifically, metal. Is it his unique blend of country-influenced southern rock with heavy metal riffs? No. How about the blue shred licks? Nah. Alright, the whammy bar stuff? Nope. Exotic scales? Not that either. Now you're more than welcome to disagree with me on this one and I actively encourage you to do so. If there's any flaws or something that I've overlooked here, just leave a comment below. I think it's his left hand. More accurately, his left hand's muting. Okay, to put this in context, born to one Jerry Bob Abbott, and don't worry here, I'm not padding this out with needless filler, his dad is an American country music songwriter and producer. He actually produced Pantera's first four albums. You know the more hair metal ones that people like to pretend don't exist. But the guitarist in question was Diamond, as opposed to Dimebag. There's some fun stuff in there if you ask me. This means it's safe to assume that Dime grew up around a lot of musicians. Not just that, but probably very good musicians. See, relevant backstory, not simply filler to trick or distract you and pad out the runtime with. We're staying firmly on track here. If you know about the country scene in Nashville, the calibre of session players in that genre, it's safe to say the Abbott brothers have picked up a lot of tricks and ideas, maybe directly, maybe just via osmosis during their formative years. I mean, even the song and album title, Cowboys From Hell, suggests this mashup of all things country and metal. Now, a technique that hadn't really been heard much in hard rock or metal, but is essential to the country standard technique, the Texas Shuffle. <laughs> There, Stevie Ray Vaughan's Pride and Joy being a great point of reference. It's left hand muting. This is so common in metal and heavier music now, it seems almost stupid to mention it. This technique is so pivotal that it's more or less spawned an entire genre. Any gen band is going to use this. New metal songs were full of it, as well as post rock bands and modern metal groups like Periphery, maybe even Mastodon, Gojira, Polyphia, using this dead stop sound, all from the left hand muting. Now, I'm not saying that Dimebag invented this, we already know the country guys have been doing in their shuffle grooves. What I'm saying is this playing in Pantera really, and I mean really popularised this technique for metal. If we want to dive into subgenres, it's a pretty crucial component to the industrial and groove metal sounds as well. So there is my case, several subgenres, loads of bands and countless players. If there's another player who you reckon popularised this more than Daryl Lance Abbott, then let us all know. On that note, Pantera's Cowboys from Hell was released in 1990, Metallica's And Justice For All came out in 1988. The reason I mention that specific one is because of the bridge in the song 1. It probably used left hand muting to make that dead stop pop out a bit more, but still not integrating it into the riffing in that more rhythmic, tight groove sort of way like Dime did. And that's why I think that this technique, likely appropriated from country musicians, is his biggest and most easily overlooked or undervalued contributions to guitar. And to draw a line under it, let's have a look at it in action. I'm going to break it down with some Pantera riffs. To clear it up, I'm doing these all in E standard because it'll save myself and you guys tuning down just for the sake of a handful of riffs. So you can probably see in between these open notes, I'm using my left hand to mute out the string rather than my right one. If you try to use your right only, you get this. Which is alright, but it's not got that sharp. So to mute it, I'm just bringing my left fingers down, two of them to be on the safe side, and trying not to hit our harmonic. Also, if you add in a bit of the right hand as well, so muting with both hands, you're going to get a really tight dead stop there. The other things to watch out for in terms of the muting here, when you go onto this little chromatic bit on the open A string, the open one, two, 
because you've come from the E, you might find that's ringing out. So you might have something like. So you can hear there the E string still ringing out. So one way is to try and use the left hand muting to mute it. Use your palm here, or what I quite often do is just bring my thumb over the top. So I'd go. Thumb to mute the string, just as I play the open A. And then you got that open D. And you can still use your thumb to mute this uh, A string as well if you really need to from that hammer on. Just make sure you're not holding it down. So you get a nice sharp noise like that. That of course was one of the many riffs from Cowboys from Hell. Next we'll look at the intro from Walk. So again, you can see this left hand meeting at play. We're using it here. And then we do the bend, return to pitch, and after this final open E, and again the left hand meeting. So a little tip here that really helped me out with this lick, getting it to sound a bit authentic. A lot of the time when people play it, it doesn't sound quite right, and I couldn't ever put my finger on exactly what it was. I think it's two things. One is getting this bend intonated correctly. So what I've been doing to dial it in is playing this first fret, then the second one, and then bending up to the second fret from the first fret. Try to dial in just how much pressure I need on that first finger to get it to go to a semitone. And that seems to really help because otherwise you get this really inconsistent like thing going on. You want a nice steady. Right, so this one combining some quite heavy right hand muting, you want to experiment with how far up to the neck you want to be. You're getting into kind of anthrax territory here, so just find your sweet spot. And you're combining that with the left hand muting. So there's a slight twist on it here, rather than just doing the standard muting with the fingers. For the first part, it's easier to just bounce your fingers slightly off the string. So for the I'm just lifting these fingers off slightly, but I'm also muting with my right hand simultaneously, because if you just do the fingers, you can hear you get that kind of sound of your fingers coming off the string, so that. So if you bring the right hand in as well, just tilting my palm to rest on the strings, it keeps it nice and tight. But for the final one where we're going, When we've got a slight pause before we repeat the riff, you can see I'm doing the full left hand muting just to keep it extra tight, extra clean.
So a bit like the last riff in Domination, the one in This Love, we're combining this kind of more subtle <laughs> left hand muting rather than the more drastic one we've done before, again with the right hand muting. But it's the same principle in action for these dead stops. If you flatten out your hand like this in between them, as much as possible, you're going to keep the strings nice and muted. Check out that video for some more down tips. This has been Quick Guitar Tricks. That's the playlist there. Yeah, hit subscribe to keep up to date with the channel. Leave me a comment. Check out the tabs on my Patreon. Share this across social media and enable all notifications by ringing that little bell on the side if you feel so inclined. Cheers, guys. <laughs>